What is going on guys, Ronnie here at Speed Lab. Um, today, we're actually discussing something that we never really discuss. This is actually a new uh, subject or topic for a Speed Lab video. Usually we're talking about why cars are making power on the dyno or why they're not making power on the dyno. Or we're talking about engine building or cylinder heads and why you build engines in a certain way, why you're oaring cylinder heads. Mostly technical stuff, which is what this video is going to be, but this is going to be quite different. Today, we're going to be talking solely about the GTR GR6 transmission. So this is going to be very detailed, and I'm going to try to do this as fast as possible. And hopefully, I can explain this as, as you know, as uh, thoroughly as I can. Um, the reason I want to make this video is because uh, we've been working on the GR6s for, you know, since JRP days, actually. And I've had these units apart. Uh, you know quite a few times at this point and when I say apart I mean completely apart like gear sets upgrading gear sets to dots and units billet units uh, PPG gear sets and you know all that good stuff so people often think the GR6 is a very complicated transmission which it can be if you don't know anything about the transmission it can look like it's a daunting task however once you understand the principles of the transmission and where everything is, everything kind of like makes more sense and it's not as, you know, haunting of a task to tackle. Uh, taking the transmission is super easy. Uh, taking the transmission out, I mean, you drop it with the rear subframe. It doesn't take more than an hour, honestly. Uh, I probably shouldn't say that because, you know, book time is more than that. But um, yeah, so we'll say four hours. But anyway, forget what I said. Um, but once you drop it, if you want to actually access the unit, if you want to tear it apart, not for basic maintenance, but if you want to tear it apart, get to the ETS unit, get to the rear diff, uh, you do have to pretty much, you know, get an engine hoist and pick up the GR6 unit, which kind of makes it a pain in the ass because you then have to, you know, put it somewhere that you can, you know, access all the bolts and work on it and whatnot. So, um, I kind of want to explain to you guys how the GR6 unit works. Okay. So the GR6, obviously this is a rear mounted transmission. Okay. It's a DCT. It's a dual clutch transmission, which is essentially manual because if you guys look over here, these gears have synchros on them. Okay, now the way a dual clutch transmission works is you have clutch baskets, you have two clutch baskets, and then you have two shafts basically that are, um, you know, one is for the even gears, one is for the odd gears. Um, your next upshift is always pre selected, so as soon as you hit that button, it takes about 40 50 milliseconds, and the TCM switches to the next gear so that's why dct is you know such a um you know superior transmission because it shifts so freaking fast that uh, you know i mean i no human can really shift that fast uh so any dct not just a gr6 but that's again what makes this transmission mission superior and you know guys like uh shep have you know they're making over 3,000 horsepower and they're still using the gr6 unit which is very very impressive now there's three sections to this. There's the mid section, which houses all the gears and shift forks and all that good stuff, which we'll talk about in a minute. There's the front section, which houses the ETS unit. The ETS unit is the front clutch pack. So this is what transfers power to the front of the car, okay? So the way this works, let me go back to this real quick. There's a drive shaft right, right here, okay, a propeller shaft. Uh, there's a bell housing right behind the engine, okay? And there's a flex plate and everything in there. And then the shaft is always spinning as long as your engine's running, okay? So this shaft's always spinning. This is not unless the car is actually moving. So while this does spin and, you know, heat up the oil and everything, this, unless the car is actually moving, this does not spin. The GTR sends about 10% of its power, the GR6, I should say, to the front tires. So on a stock car that makes, uh, I don't know, 400 wheel horsepower on the dyno, whatever, don't quote me on the number, uh, sends about 35, 40 horse to the front. On a car that makes 3,000, it sends about... Uh, 300 horsepower to the front so you guys can see why this little unit can get super stressed out uh jack chef you know a lot of guys have upgrades uh increasing the clutch capacity how aggressive the clutches are uh and that's called the ets unit now right next to the ets unit there is actually a secondary valve body there's two valve bodies in the gr6 there's the main one which controls the shift forks shift solenoids uh shift forks okay we'll talk about that in a second and then there's the secondary valve body, which is for the front clutches. Okay. Now the front clutches are housed here. That was the clutches that I was telling you guys about that actually control the shifting. So we also have a rear differential here that is again, housed in the same unit. Now, they're all separate units, but they, it is a part of the GR6. So if you want to service the diff, 
you're dropping the whole thing. If you want to service a gear, you're dropping the whole thing. If you want to get to the ETS unit, you're dropping the whole thing. Um, again, it's not as hard as it sounds, but uh, yeah, once you get to kind of know how to work on these, they're pretty easy. So we also have an oil cooler that has engine coolant running through it. So this is what's cooling the transmission oil. So this is almost like a stabilizer. Um, we have a line filter like we do on pretty much every transmission, or every DCT that I've seen at least. Uh, and we also have a pan filter. So you can use the Datsun unit or you can use an OEM. So over here we got an OEM, actually, nope, we got a Datsun unit and then we got a Datsun line filter, which is reusable, which I don't know if I would reuse it. And then we also have this. So these are the CBA TSBs, okay? So let's talk about this now, guys. Let me see if I have enough battery on here to talk about this. Yeah, I got about two minutes and 11%. So hopefully I can do this. If not, we'll make a part two. Um, so these are the shift pistons, okay? Now, I've already charged the customer because this unit has been sitting, this, this whole transmission was sitting outside for a couple years. So all this has to be cleaned out. Actually, the valve body has to get completely taken apart and cleaned out so it's kind of tedious but we're gonna have to do it because as you guys can see there's a lot of grit and that's pretty much metal shavings you know clutch material uh, bad stuff basically in there that you you don't want in your transmission so these are what actually you know oil pressure gets directed uh either to this side or this side and this is gonna control the shift because that's directly controlling the actual forks okay as you guys can see, when they took this unit out, they did not lock it. You're supposed to lock this whenever you take the valve body off. So we don't know which side, well, theoretically, I know which side is what, but we don't know uh, which side is supposed to face the magnet. And if it's not close to the magnet, it's gonna throw a code and it's not gonna know where to shift. The way you figure out if somebody actually made this mistake is you look at where the actual grime is. So as we can see, the grime is right over there, right? Meaning, that's how it lines up because that is a magnet and if there is grime over here that means the magnet has actually pulled it to that side same thing over here it's already set up for us so we don't need to do anything over here if you guys look here that's proper and that's proper so this is where it needs to be these tsp clips guys are used on these three okay and the reason we do that is because these three are aluminum and this is, uh, a, I don't know, powdered metal probably. Um, but the reason we use those TSP clips is because these actually wear on the aluminum and these can actually spin in the housing. So these shift forks are kind of known for having this issue. Um, another thing that's a very common failure point are these uh, pressure sensors. The two on the clutch ones have been replaced. Actually, the customer took this unit out beca because of this. Um, and the one over here is going to be replaced now. So the, we reuse only the Datsun unit. So we get the new Datsun units instead of OEM or we don't use anything but Datsun. And uh, you either need a the control module or you need a transmission tune to accommodate for these higher pressure sensors. So my battery is about to die. We'll be right back. All right, fellas, and we are back. Okay, so one other way, aside from seeing where the debris is collected, to be able to tell how these shift pistons are supposed to line up so you get a little pocket screwdriver or any kind of magnet and you can see where it is actually magnetic so this side is magnetic this side is not okay that means this side has to line up with this other magnet the sensor over here so i kind of cleaned it from the surface just to see how they're you know moving in and out this one's fine this one's okay. This one is very gritty. Okay, so what we're actually gonna do is there are circlips over here. We're gonna take the circlips off, take the pistons out individually, clean them, assemble them again uh, with a little bit of trans fluid, just a little bit so they can move in and out freely um, and then uh, go from there. All right guys, so real quickly, this is another reason why we wanted this assemble and check a transmission that has that much grit on the valve body. Look at that. Look at how deep the scoring is. Same thing where the piston is being housed as well. So we're going to attempt to see if we can actually take some emery cloth and knock this down just a tiny bit. 
But remember, we don't want to do too much because if we do, then it might not hold pressure. So luckily we do have another valve body that we can use to shift pistons from, but hopefully that portion is saveable. So we'll see. All right, so as you guys can see, the valve body is back in. So what I actually had to do for piston number two, shift piston number two, is I actually had to take a little bit of emery cloth and kind of just give it a nice smoothing of the actual housing for shift piston number two. And luckily, I had a spare valve body here that the customer supplied. So I was able to get the shift piston because the shift piston was damaged um, and uh, you know replace it with that unit. Again, keeping being mindful of the position of the actual magnets or else, you know, it's not going to shift properly or, you know, might try to shift two gears at the same time if you have it set up wrong. But uh, anyway, so all pistons were moving back and forth properly. We then went ahead and locked them with, uh, we use paper clips to lock the piston. So whenever you try to push it in, they don't kind of twist on the shift forks and cause, you know, issues trying to put this valve body in. You don't need a lot of pressure to push this on. It kind of just slides right in. It actually has dowels. Um, I think it's one on each side, but anyway, super easy to install. The only thing left to do now, guys, is just to crack this open, change the line filter, change the pan filter afterwards, and then seal it up. We got a brand new gasket for the pan. Usually you can use it two, three times, but it's always, you know, never a bad idea to replace the unit completely. And then we're going to crack this open. And we're going to put 10 uh, liters of the Datsun uh, DCT fluid. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. The GR6, it's not really rocket science to work on. I understand why people kind of get intimidated by a unit just because there's so much, you know, happening inside one unit. It's not just the transmission. You know, you also have your rear differential and you also got your front clutches and your front valve body and your ETS unit, which again, transfers the power from the rear to the front. So I can see why it could be a very, you know, very daunting task for some people. And look, that's perfectly fine. I try to make these videos as educational as possible so you guys can take something away from it. You know, tackle your own transmission job if you need to. And if you guys have any questions, you guys know I'm always, you know, willing to help out. So just drop a comment and I'll try to help you as best as I can. However, if you still don't feel comfortable working on your GR6, that's why we're here. You know, give us a call, shoot us an email, submit a work request uh, from our Instagram link, and um, we'll take care of you. Uh, that being said, I really appreciate you guys watching and checking in again. Uh, we do have some other cool stuff planned. Uh, my girls 2020 STI is gonna be our next test subject and we're gonna make a nice series on that uh, It's a 2020 STI like I said, we're gonna start calibrating it on HP tuners uh, I have been trying to kind of get my foot in the HP tuners game for quite a while now I have all the hardware I need and just kind of needed the car to test and what better platform to move on to than a Subaru Thanks, Josh Bader. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, with that being said, um, it's going to be a series with me and my girl, of course. And, uh, you know, you guys are going to get to see it. And I'm super excited about that. And I feel like that's going to be also very educational because we're going to start with a bone stock car. And then we're kind of going to start going ham from there. But it's going to be a learning curve for myself uh, as well. And majority of the people watching, you know, I'm sure some super tuners are going to be watching and, you know, be like, okay, that's, you know, on a child's play but uh with that being said again thank you guys for checking in we're gonna see you guys very shortly thanks